As an introduction, I'd like to show you a couple of experimental results that illustrate um, some aspects of nonlinear systems, in particular aspects that we want to concentrate on in this uh, class. And uh, the system I want to show you about, tell you about, is a, a fluid system, which is called Taylor Vortex Flow, which is a very clean system and therefore has been used extensively to study nonlinear dynamics in the experimental setting. And it consists simply of two cylinders that are concentric. So this would be an inner cylinder and an outer cylinder. And between these two cylinders is a fluid. And the inner cylinder is rotating. And as it's rotating, it drags along the fluid. Whereas the outer cylinder is rotating, maybe not rotating, or rotating more slowly. And so therefore, the fluid out there is rotating more slowly. And as a result, the inner fluid experiences centrifugal, fo centrifugal force, which is stronger than this fluid. And so eventually, this actually wants to push out. And when the fluid goes out, it has to come in someplace else. And so what actually happens is that if the rotation rate is sufficiently large, then you get not just the fluid flow around the cylinders, but also in, a, in sort of a vortic vortical structure or donut structure. Let me sketch that here. So you have the fluid has to go out someplace and in someplace else. And so you get these vortices. Of course, while these, you know, the fluid is not just going like that, it's going around the, uh, at the same time. So it actually does some kind of a spiral motion. But uh, here you see most of these vortices and they're sort of stuck like um, donuts. So that's what you, you know, you kind of sort of see these kind of objects. And that's what you see here uh, in, in this photograph. Here, the, the outer cylinder is rotating in a stationary, and you see these vortices stacked on top of each other very nice and cleanly. Whereas down here, you see no vortices at all. Um, actually, I need to explain why that would be the case, because I only explained that the vortices show up if the rotation rate is large enough, and when it's low, then there's no vortices. So here, actually, turns out that the gap between the cylinder is narrow down here, and it's wide up there. When it's narrow, then the fluid is getting sheared too much on a too tight a space, and the viscosity keeps it from making these vortices. So if the cylinders were homogeneous, always the same thickness, then you would have a perfect stack of vortices like that. And so the point to make here is that as you change that control parameter, the rotation rate in the, of the inner cylinder, uh, you get a change, a qualitative change from a featureless, a featureless flow to one of uh, vortices that break the translation symmetry. And so if you now change the parameter further, it turns out you can have further qualitative changes. You get these transitions to qualitatively different states. And so let me show you a video where they um, increase the rotation rate uh, in time. And so um, you see how the fluid changes, the flow changes. So here you see the, the cylinders rotating. There's a little speck on the cylinder that shows it. And you see this faint structure showing up. That's these vortices that I mentioned. The rotation rate is increasing. And so you see that uh, these vortices become more pronounced. And at some point, actually, they don't look so, uh, they, some are brighter and some are darker. So it's the inward and the outward uh, rotation looks slightly different. And the rotation rate is now still further increased. Right now, not much is happening. There are still the same kind of vortices. Here was a defect, uh, we, which we couldn't really see how it's happening. It's changing. It's when the wavelength changes of these guys. But now we see uh, something else happening. Suddenly, this boundary between the vortices is not flat anymore. It's wavy. And you have these rotating waves going around with these fat little sausages at some locations and thin ones at other locations. And as the rotation rate goes up and up, you actually get this goes fast and now you see that the vortices actually well they start to dissolve sort of well not quite but to become turbulent and so now you have a very quite turbulent flow um, and uh, the boundaries seem to be flat again so in the video they now decrease the rotation rates again and then you see the sequence going back um, through these other kind of vortices so let's stop here uh, let me show you sort of what other states there are 
And so to show you sort of the complexity of the system. So here is a, a very complicated diagram, uh, but um, it's just the point is to, just to give you a feeling for the things that can happen in this system. So here plotted is um, the rotation rate of the inner cylinder. And so as you increase that, the vortices kick in. But if you rotate the outer cylinder also, then different states can occur. And so here what they show is they get a state which are like twisted uh, vortices, which show up sort of here. And then they have these wavy vortices which show up here. And here they have um, wavelets which are here. But you see, you really get many other states. You get modulated waves, turbulent vortices, ripples. You get modulated waves again, wavy vortices, intermittent states, spirals, interpreting spirals, wavy spirals. So the point is, you get these transitions at which a qualitative change occurs between one state and the other. And so the question is, what can you do mathematically to get some kind of insight into what's going on here? These equations are extremely complicated, and so you can't expect to. Um, get anything analytically in that sense. You're lucky if you can capture these things in numerical simulations. But the most interesting parts, at least when you start, are really these transitions between the states. And it turns out those transitions, because uh, for a reason that we will understand, um, are also the locations where we have a better chance at getting analytical insight into what's going on. And so that, that's what, what we will uh, look at uh, largely. In, at least in large part of the class. Let me just mention another system to you, which has also been, is also a classical system, which also has been used extensively to investigate nonlinear systems and pose questions that then mathematical questions, you know, emerging to understand the experiments, which is also a fluid system. It's a fluid that's heated from below. And so you have on the bottom a higher temperature, on the top you have a lower temperature, and because the fluid is, most fluids expand with heat, so the fluid is lighter on the bottom and he heavier on the top. And so it wants to rise and it has to go out down someplace else. And so again, you get these vortices or convection rolls as one calls them. And you have again a state like that. And if you now look, you know, this was a side view. If you were to look from top, you know, you can imagine that maybe these convection rolls are these straight kind of objects. And that's what you see in, here in these experiments in the top view, where the bright lines are where the cold fluid is going down and the white dark lines are where the hot fluid is coming up. If you change parameters, then instead of having these nice stro ordered stripes, you get this hexagonal pattern with an interesting transition, which uh, we will investigate. And under other situations, you can also have uh, stripes, but they actually form a spiral, or maybe spirals with multiple arms and defects. And eventually, as the heating is increased, they form these complicated states, which are actually uh, chaotic, where you have all these, these kind of defects forming and coming away, going away, and spirals form and spirals go away. It's called a spiral defect chaos state. This will be too complicated for us, but uh, I just want to illustrate again that you have these systems where when you change parameters, you get a quality, a change in the qualitative behavior of the system. And these qualitative changes are one of the things we want to investigate in this class.